When you think of Dr. Seuss, what pops into your head? One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish? The infamous cat in the hat? Green eggs and ham? Well, think again. We all know Dr. Seuss as a colorful and imaginative children's author. However, he originally started his intellectual adventures as a liberal propaganda publicist while World War II was approaching. This documentary will investigate how Dr. Seuss explored using literature and animation to influence a country's beliefs. Theodore Seuss Geisel decided that he wanted to help out his country. Since he was too old for the draft, he began serving in Frank Capra's Signal Corps of the U.S. Army. This introduced him to the art of animation, which later led to a series of animated training films. This is where his trainee character, Private Snafu, made his debut. Oh, they got it soft back then. They don't even know there's a war going on. While being a liberal propaganda publicist for various political magazines, Theodore Seuss Geisel was offered a contract from Houghton Mifflin. They asked Theodore to write and illustrate a children's book using only 225 new reader vocabulary words. And that is what led to the creation of the cat in the hat. In his early writings, Dr. Seuss began to explore using literature as propaganda by making allusions to his liberal beliefs. In the seemingly innocent children's book, Star-Bellied Sneetches, Dr. Seuss uses hidden political references to criticize the way that Jewish people were treated by the Nazis of Germany. In the book, the yellow bird-like creatures called Sneetches symbolized the discrimination that the Jewish people suffered by the Aryan supremacy. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. They'd have nothing to do with a plain belly sword. Remember, when you are out walking, you walk past a snitch of that type without talking. Keep your snoot in the air and remember to snort. We have no truck whatever with the plain-bellied sort. Another story Seuss used to make allusions to World War II and explore children's literature is the Yertle Turtle. It is about the king of a pond of turtles. At first he is satisfied with the small pond that he rules. Then he shortly becomes dissatisfied with the small pond and decides he must rule over everything he sees. Until Yertle, the king of them all, decided the kingdom he ruled was too small. I'm the ruler, said Yertle, of all that I see, but I don't see enough. That's the trouble with me. With this stone for a throne, I look down on my pond, but I cannot look down on the places beyond. This throne that I sit on is too, too low down. It ought to be higher, he said with a frown. If I could sit high, how much greater I'd be. What a king, I'd be a ruler of all I could see. Yertle then forces all the turtles in the pond to stand on top of each other so he can see more land. By doing that, he feels he has more power over all the land he sees. Turtles, more turtles, he bellowed and brayed, and the turtles weighed down, and the pond were afraid. They trembled, they shook, but they came. They obeyed. In the end, the turtles at the very bottom become too weak to withstand the torture any longer and collapse, leaving Yertle the turtle to fall to nothing. The composition of Yertle the Turtle is very similar to the stigma of Adolf Hitler. Both are greedy and seek domination, so much so that they are willing to do anything and hurt anyone in their way. Aside from World War II, Dr. Seuss also wrote about other political issues and standard morals for young readers. The Lorax, published in 1971, demonstrates his views on environmental setbacks and greed in the human society. <laughs> They say I'm a fool to oppose things like these, but I'm going to continue to speak for the trees. This story explores how the encounters between industry and environment could be harmful. The Butter Battle book contained acute similarities to the Cold War and how it ended with a cliffhanger, leading some to believe both groups could easily wipe each other out. Horton Hears a Who famously states, a person is a person, no matter how small. While teaching children acceptance of all people, it also throws in political referencing to the bombing of Hiroshima, when the mayor of Whoville says, When the black bottom birdie let go and we dropped, we landed so hard that our clock fell all stopped. 
Throughout his life, he affected a wide span of people, not only bringing joy and learning to children, but also touching on global subjects to shed light on important morals and events in history. Now with that all being said, when I say Dr. Seuss, what pops into your head? Now this is a story all about how Ted's life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute just sit right there, I'll tell you how you can Dr. Seuss out of thin air. In West Massachusetts, born and raised, Dark Mouth was where he spent most of his days. Chilling out, writing, drawing all cool, and spitting some rhymes outside of the school. When a couple of countries who are to no good started making trouble in the neighborhood. They got a few little fights, and the U.S. got scared. So we need some propaganda, so you better be prepared. We whistled for a speech, and when it came near, he said, Horton, here's a who, and he said, who's there? If anything, I could say that this was pretty rare, but I thought, no, forget it. He's a multimillionaire. We pulled up to Whoville about seven or eight, and we yelled to the grid, your home, smell your waiter. We looked at his kingdom, we're finally there, to witness Dr. Seuss, the king of everywhere. <laughs>